What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor. Smash the subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are going to be notified every time we upload new content. Now you guys have been asking for a series of videos on dry suit diving. And we're going to start part one today where we talk about the different types of dry suits and how to determine which one's going to be best for you. So with that being said, let's get started and learn a little bit more about dry suit diving. Now there's several different styles of dry suits and different materials that's used to make dry suits, but in general, you're gonna have three to four different types of material. We're gonna start out with the neoprene dry suit. Now the neoprene dry suit is typically made of the same style of neoprene that your wetsuit is, and we understand that wetsuits in general are waterproof. However, where the materials are sewed together, you have microscopic holes in the material, and that's why you actually get wet in a wetsuit. Well, the same would actually apply to a dry suit with the exception that in a neoprene style dry suit, the seams have actually been sealed over the top, whether it's glue or some type of seal tape, that prevents any water from coming in. Now the benefits to a neoprene dry suit, they are extremely warm. So the cool thing is you don't have to wear a bunch of bulky undergarments underneath them. They're also very flexible. You've got plenty of movement when you're wearing the suit. Another great thing is if you do damage the suit, maybe you tear a little hole in it, they're very easy to fix. You can simply glue on a little patch and a little bit of aqua seal goes very long way on a neoprene dry suit. They typically come with some type of soft seal where you roll it down on the neck or the wrist and that creates that waterproof seal. Now one of the downsides to dry suit diving in a neoprene dry suit is they're not self-doning. Of course you can put the suit on by yourself but most of them are going to be some type of back entry and you're going to have to have somebody zip it up and unzip it. And though neoprene dry suits are my personal favorite, they tend not to work a lot for say a solo diving situation or somewhere that I need to get up and gear up by myself. Now the next type of dry suit that we're going to look at of course is a bi-laminate dry suit. This is a shell based suit simply meaning it's just a shell that covers your body and you typically have to wear thicker undergarments with it. But the great thing about a bi-laminate suit is it's two different types of material glued together. You're going to have an external protective layer and you're going to have an internal waterproof layer. Now these come in both back entry and front entry models. They tend to be a little bit stiffer. You're going to sacrifice quite a bit of flexibility with them but they're very durable suits. I personally use a bi-laminate for most salvage work and public safety work and type of diving that I do, and they really come in handy. It's a self donning model. Mine happens to be a front entry model where I can zip across the front. That excess material actually wraps around, snaps back into the suit, so it's a very slender fitting suit. They're very easy to burp and get all the air out of as well, and they're a durable model. Now, the thing about bi-laminate, if you rip them or tear a hole in them, it is a little bit lengthier process to fix them. Now, the great thing about it, though, is you can put replaceable seals both in the wrist and the neck so it makes it easy to fix that on the spot because we all know if you tear out a seal in a dry suit if you don't have the quick seals it's a lengthy process to get new seals glued in so the cool thing about bi-laminate you can put your quick seals in and they're very easy to operate now the next suit that we're going to look at is the tri-laminate suit. Now very similar to the bi-laminate, it's just three different types of material that's glued together to create the suit. Now those three different types of material do different things. The internal layer, that is a breathable layer. The middle layer, that's your actual waterproof layer. And then the external layer, that is your protective layer. Now when I said the internal layer is your breathable, that's in case you perspire while you're diving, some of that moisture can come out of the suit, but no moisture will actually come back in. Now since you do have three different types of material, they tend to be a little bit thinner than what a bi-laminate material is going to be, so it's going to give you more mobility and more flexibility when you wear it. Now another great thing about tri-laminate material dry suits is most of them are front diagonal entry. That means they're self-doning suits. So for solo divers, these suits are absolutely great. I can very easily zip mine and unzip mine without a dive buddy there. So if you're a solo diver, it's a great option. Now with the tri-laminate suit, there's many different accessories that you can go with, large pockets, things like that. But one of my favorite things personally is the quick change wrist seals and neck seal. That makes it very easy to change a seal on the spot versus having to send your suit off or even glue new seals in yourself. So it's a kind of a favorite choice of a lot of divers out there. 
Now the next dry suit that we're going to look at is a vulcanized rubber dry suit. Now the great thing about vulcanized rubber is going to give you the best protection if you're say diving in that truly hazmatic environment. Now the downsides to vulcanized rubber is they're not very flexible. They're not going to give you hardly any mobility and they are extremely cold as well. Now they do come in both front entry and back entry models. Most of the time you're going to see them in a back entry model. So that means you're not going to be able to zip it up by yourself. But even though you've got that added protection, they're not going to be better say for the recreational or the technical diver who needs that mobility. They're typically used in commercial diving operations, public safety diving operations, or even salvage operations when you need that type of protection, say in a hazmatic environment. Now the last dry suit that we're going to talk about is kind of a hybrid model and there's several different brands out there that make these such as say Aqualung or even Whites and that's where you have say a bilaminate or trilaminate suit that is very thin base but it also has a very thin layer of neoprene around it. And these suits are actually pretty cool because you're going to have the added protection of that say trilaminate suit but you're going to have that neoprene covering that's going to pull all that extra material in so that you don't have a lot of extra material that's getting in your way when you're trying to maneuver. Now these come in both front entry and back entry models and the cool thing is you can even get replaceable wrist seals and neck seals so that you can change them on the spur of the moment versus having to send your suit off to get it repaired. So guys, as you can see, there's many different styles, many different models, many different brands out there. How are you gonna know which one's gonna be right for you? Well, what you need to do is go by your local scuba retail center and talk about the models that they sell. Get up with one of the local dry suit instructors and ask him advice. See what's gonna work best for you, see what models they offer, and even if you have to branch out, do your own research to see which suit's gonna be best for you. As you can tell, I got three different models that I wear pretty much day in and day out, and I wear them for different things. My neoprene is my absolute favorite that I go to for any type of fun diving, any type of cold water diving that I'm not actually working. If I do have to be in a working environment, such as if I'm doing, say, salvage or public safety, I will typically go to my bilaminate suit because it's a front entry model. I can get in and out of it very easy, but it's going to give me that protection that I need in a hazmatic environment. And then, of course, I have my tri-lamp. That's typically what I wear, say, as a backup to a lot of my public safety diving and salvage work. And I also use it for solo diving simply because I can get in and out of it very easily. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed part one of this series. We've got a ton of videos coming out on dry suits, accessories, and anything to do with dry suit diving. So definitely stay tuned for that. If you got any questions on any of the models that you saw in this video, drop me a comment down below and check out the description. I'm gonna list each model here and kind of give you a description of what each model is actually for. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely share it as well. I'm going to go ahead and sign off for part one. Take care. God bless, and I'll see you in the next video.